Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is Thursday, the 25th day of January, and we've started that house in Point Pleasant Beach, the rough wiring, and I came home for lunch and I have to go to the recycling center uh, to out all the scrap copper so I can scrap it, make a few dollars, pay for lunch for the next couple days, maybe. Lewis is actually on Herbertsville Road in Howell Township. 131 pounds? Right up there, okay. Oh, okay, nice. Right there's the thing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You wanna go that way? Yeah, okay. Okay. All that wiring is not even that old. I rewired a house like six years ago, now I'm rewiring it again. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Beautiful, thank you so much. So for that 100 pounds of copper, I got $106. Not bad. So as some of you already know, I rewired this house about six years ago when it was all knob and tube. This house was built in 1920 something and it had knob and tube and the owner hired me to rewire and get rid of all the knob and tube which is what i did now i'm back here six years later and they've raised the house and we're rewiring the entire house except for a couple of the bedrooms that i previously wired on the rewire six years ago if you understand everything i just said to you there we're going to start on the second floor here uh, supplying some new circuits to some existing wiring that i put in six years ago and then once that's complete we can get onto some new wiring in case you're wondering why I'm wearing this high visibility vest, it's just because it's dark and raining and um, I just want to be able to be seen so I don't get hit by a car or something getting coffee or at Home Depot or the supply house. That's the only reason why I'm wearing it. So this is a somewhat complicated job and what I need to do is figure out where and why some circuits need to be refed and how I'm going to do that. So I have a attic fan right there I just need to resupply power to that and then I have some receptacles built into the baseboards on the second floor which is not being gutted so I need to resupply those circuits and I'm coming up with a plan right here and it's a mixture between uh, convenience as far as the length of the wire and how easy this is going to be for me to resupply things and what maybe needs to run some new wires to so that's the plan I'm coming up here. And this is the attic, and you can see the 2x4 joists are not very strong, so you don't want to stand on those, obviously. Um, but like I said, this was all filled with some old insulation when we rewired it, when everything was knob and tube, and now we're back and coming up with a game plan. Okay, so there's only a couple wires cut, and these were cut to do this reframing here at the top of the staircase. So this I know from taking a look, it goes down to the receptacle, it feeds back out, and goes down underneath those rafters um, down to another receptacle I believe on the wall in this room right in front of me here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use we're gonna refeed this wire that goes to the receptacle I was just talking about this actually goes to the fan light in the middle of the room there's two switch legs in there one red one black and a neutral wire alrighty so that's gonna need to be refed and I believe that this is my circuit supply right here that goes over to the junction box in the bathroom. So I'm gonna go confirm that with a pull of the wire. And if, that's, if I pull that wire, then this is the one. And we'll reconnect it. All right, so I'm pretty sure that wiring is this piece right here in this junction box. And if I pull on this wire, and I pull, I can see that wire I was just playing with on top of the ladder. I know that this is the one. But this goes underneath whoever did this framing. Right there, no big deal. But this is why I label all my boxes, right? That's bathroom and guest bedroom receptacles. So this whole box will get resupplied with a new circuit and will energize anything it's connected to that hasn't been repurposed or relocated now this may seem complicated to some people if you're not used to doing this but i am used to doing this and this was rather easy to figure out this existing wiring and resupply it 
All right, so these wires, I know I cut them back over there. They used to be home runs that went all the way down to the basement, believe it or not. So one of these is the old home run. We'll figure out which one that is. But my main concern now are these wires that go over the joist. Where's this go? That goes someplace connected still. And so is this one. So I want to find out where they're going and what they're doing. I'm talking about that NM. There's two of them up, so that's up there. And you can see that's my DeWalt stapler up there. That's what got that up there. All right, so one has to be, looks like it's supplying the exhaust fan. All right, that's a disconnect switch and an exhaust fan. I believe that's what that one's doing. And the second one actually comes down here to that receptacle. So we're gonna resupply that. And then we have to resupply this circuit as well for this bedroom, which has not too many receptacles, but it's got this light switch and the ceiling fan. Um, this receptacle on the exterior wall on the inside of the house used to be a piece of PVC. It was a PVC home run that went down the siding here, all the way down. But since we raised this house and we're doing all this work, let's get rid of that disgusting looking PVC that's not needed when you do this type of remodeling job and do it right the first time. If you like this video, now's a good time to hit that like button. Thank you. It was very common in older houses like this that didn't have forced air um, heating and cooling. You, you were lucky. Well, you didn't have cooling in 1920s. That's the first thing. But you had heat. And most of that heat was from a boiler, which is what they had here. That's all coming out. So now that we're having a force. So when you don't have a forced air system, what you need to do is put in window air conditioning units and you're going to need dedicated circuits for that. And what we would do is run conduit up to a receptacle on the outside of the house so you can have that dedicated circuit for the air conditioner. I was very lucky to have this table up here on the second floor to rest my tools so I don't have to bend over and get them so often. Of course, I could bring a table too, but since this table was here, I used it. And uh, I'm just setting up my cordless drill here to make up a junction box. Uh, it's nice to have this table. It's convenient. So what I'm doing here is I'm removing a few of the cables in this junction box. And I'm actually leaving a few of them in there because some of them are going to be reused. And I'm going to use this junction box uh, as a starting point to extend the circuit to the, the main junction box that I'm putting up in the attic. What that means is these wires were a little bit short to reach the junction box location that I'm going to be using primarily for the circuits on the second floor here. So we're going to extend the short wires here to our main junction box. And that's what I'm doing here with this splice. And I'm doing it right here because as you see, the staircase is right there. And it's easier to be doing this standing up in the hallway here than up on a ladder while poking out um, dangerously above the staircase there. So I always say work smarter, not harder if you can. So that's why we're doing this standing up and not up on a ladder. But there'll be plenty of time coming up shortly to be on a ladder to make more junctions and splices and wire nuts and cover plates. So stay tuned. Okay, so now I'm ready to put this junction box in place. And if you saw that flashing light, that just means that the battery on my floodlight up here is going is going dead. And that just warns you that the battery is going to die soon in case you're in a spot that's very dark. And uh, you don't want to be left in the darkness just because the battery died. So as you see here, I'm taking away some staples so that I can bring the wire over these new heating and cooling ducts, flexible ducts. You don't want to uh, have any wires laying on them so you can prevent the airflow from flowing through the ductwork. And I'm pretty sure I get everything underneath just right here. Uh, this, this footage is maybe like two weeks ago. Um, today is February 10th and this was January 25th. So, you know, a little more than two weeks ago when I did this. So I don't remember everything I did. I do remember getting this junction box in place. Uh, up here on the second floor of this house. Keep in mind here, um, I'm right next, I'm right at the top of the staircase here. And so to my left right there is a long way down. 
So I need to keep continually reaching over to my left, which you're not supposed to do when you're on a ladder, is lean off to the side. You're supposed to keep your belt within those rails on the side, between the rails of a ladder. Uh, but you do what you got to do to get done here. But be safe. So after I got those wires over the joist here, I realized that I'm going to need to drill some holes just to make this nice and neat. Uh, I'm so close to, in fact, right over my left shoulder right there is the entrance at the top of the staircase to get up into the attic. And so I'd have to look up the code, but I'm pretty sure the language speaks about any open wiring around that opening got to be about six feet away if you're going to lay it directly on top of that joist. There's not that much room to walk around up there, and it's just going to be light storage. Uh, but close to the hatch right there, I just like to drill holes and pull my cables through. Uh, just to be safe so the wires don't get damaged uh, while people are storing stuff up in the attic there. Uh, after that was done, um, I actually bought some pizza with some of the money I got for the copper wire. And uh, here's a couple of the guys working on the job. I bought some pizza. We had a little pizza party. And uh, this is us in the, working in the kitchen. And everybody was very appreciative about the uh, pizza. After break time, it's back upstairs to do some more wiring up here to complete the uh, old circuits to supply them and get this junction box in place. Um, definitely took me a few hours to get all this done, that's for sure. And there you see I'm just bringing my wire nut case up there to the top. So as I'm, And screws I got in there, staples. And so as I'm doing this wiring, I got the little accessory stuff that I need to complete this work. And so eventually this junction box does get done and I don't think it's included in this video. Uh, this is going to be a, a series video because this is a big job. It'll take a while to get done. Anyhow, um, so I wound up having, I don't know, I think you could put 30 number 14 conductors inside this box without a device. I'm sorry, maybe 29 in the ground. But by 2020 standards, you have to, I think... Every four grounds counts as, one, uh, counts as one, and every other one after that counts as a quarter. Anyway, I'm below the box fill, even though there's a lot of uh, conductors in this box. But this is the end of this video, and I just want to thank you guys for being patient until I uploaded a new one. This is it, and um, there'll be more coming from this series when I go back there to finish some more of this work. Just passed my rough electrical inspection late uh, last week, and... Um, Thanks for watching this video, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.